Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at another super tiny mini PC. This is the GMK Nook Box. Now, to some regular viewers, this actually might look familiar because I have done a review on this unit, but the one I actually received was a pre-production or a development unit, and unfortunately, performance wasn't great with that one due to cooling issues with that original unit. But I finally got my hands on a full production unit. This is the one that you can actually get from their website. I believe they're on Amazon also. I'll leave some links in the description. And in this video, we're going to see how this really performs. Now, as you can see, the GMK Nook Box is tiny. I mean, it's a palm size 4K mini PC that's capable of running Windows 10, Linux, and other operating systems. It's got an x86 CPU. There's not a lot of I.O. on here, but there's not much more room on here to fit any more. And overall, I'm a big fan of this form factor, but we have seen a slew of these palm size mini 4K PCs. Now, along with the unit itself, inside of the box, you're also going to receive your power supply. And even if we include the power supply in the total size of the Nook Box, this thing is still a super small mini PC. Now, like I said, there have been a few of these released. We have the Lark Box, the Lark Box Pro. I think Xiaomi's got one coming. And I've actually seen a few other Chinese manufacturers coming out with a PC that basically looks exactly the same here. So on the front of the Nook box, we don't have much going on except for a status LED and our power button. Moving around to the right hand side, we have a micro SD card slot and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Round back, USB type C, only there for power, full size HDMI and two USB 3.0 ports. This is an actively cooled PC, so we do have a fan built in here and at full blast you can hear it. I mean, it's not super annoying but it is audible when this thing is at full boat. Real quick, I wanted to give you a little size comparison between the all-new LarkBox Pro versus the GMK Nook Box. As you can see, they are basically the same thing. We have different cases here. The top is a bit different. We have a different vent style on this. The GMK Nook Box pulls in air from the top, vents it out the rear. The LarkBox Pro pulls it in from the top and vents it out of the front of the unit. But the GMK Nook Box actually has more RAM than the LarkBox Pro, coming in at 8 gigs instead of 6. Taking a look at the specs of the Nook Box for the CPU, we have the Intel J4125. This is a quad-core CPU up to 2.7 GHz on all four cores. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics up to 750 MHz. 8 gigs of LPDDR4. This is non-user upgradable and it's running at 2133 MHz. Storage on this thing is handled by a user-replaceable 128GB M.2 SSD. You just need to pull the bottom off. And it will support up to a 512 M.2 SSD if you wanted to upgrade it down the road. We have 802.11ac Wi-Fi Bluetooth 4.2 and it does come pre-installed with Windows 10 Home 64-bit. For this video, I want to test the overall usability of this little box. We're going to measure the temperatures, we'll measure power draw, I'm going to test some gaming, some 4K video playback, and web browsing. Like I said, it comes pre-installed with Windows 10 Home 64-bit, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so here it is, the GMK Nook Box. Now, I've already run some tests just to make sure that they have this thing working properly because with that initial unit that I received, the development unit, we weren't getting good performance at all because the CPU wouldn't boost up to its maximum frequency and the GPU would stay around 450 to 300 megahertz, which was really killing the performance on this unit. Now, with this one here, we still have that J4125 at 2 gigahertz with a boost up to 2.7. 8 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2133 MHz and the UHD 600 graphics. First test I ran was just a quick graphics test. Uh, with CPU-Z we can see the core of the graphics idling around 400 MHz, but if I put a load on it here, it will jump up to 650 MHz to 600. So we are getting that boost on the GPU and this is a really good sign for the GMK Nook Box. So we now know that the built-in Intel UHD graphics can work at their maximum frequency. With the last one, it was really low and it was really killing performance. So uh, first things first, web browsing, really smooth here. Let's just head over to Raspberry Pi website. Usually a quick test I run. Everything loads up nice, and I am connected to my AC Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz. Check out this Stargate here. Pretty awesome little project on the latest Magpie. But yeah, I mean, web browsing has been a treat on this little unit. All of these little J4125 CPUs have done a great job with web browsing. And when it comes to 4K video playback, it is totally possible here. So let me go ahead and pause this. I'm going to get everything ready. Make sure we're sitting at 4K. 
stats for nerds. We'll go full screen with it. And let me just reset this. 1080p. And we'll take it back up to 4K just so we can reset that frame counter up here. On the initial load in, got some drop frames, but overall these little chips do handle 4K video playback, at least 4K video streaming really well. And with those frames there, you'll never see them with the naked eye. I mean, you'd never notice that this was dropping 12 frames out of 1200. So definitely possible to stream 4K on these units. Next up, I wanted to run a couple benchmarks. So first up, we have Geekbench 5. On the top, we have the GMK Nook Box. On the bottom, we have the new Larkbox Pro. Basically the same unit, they have the same CPU, similar form factors, but the Larkbox Pro has six gigs of RAM. It's not gonna affect the score here, but it looks like they really did some tuning in the BIOS for the GMK Nook Box because we did beat out the Larkbox Pro in single and multi-core scores. Next up, we have Cinebench R23, and I'm not really running this for the scores. I'm really running this for the heat. When it comes to R23 of Cinebench, it runs this for 10 minutes. It'll run it over and over again. And by the end of this, I want to see how hot this little unit gets. I'm kind of monitoring the CPU temperature in the background, and the CPU is clocking up to 2.6 gigahertz while running this. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish up, and then we'll check out the score and the temps. All right, so my test is finished here. Uh, total score here for Cinebench R23, 1373. Definitely super low on the board here, as you can see, but my temperature didn't go over 79 degrees Celsius, and we were at 2.6 gigahertz the whole time. The fan was definitely spinning up the whole time I was running this, but I actually thought that we'd see much higher temperatures here, especially running this for 10 minutes straight. Moving over to some PC gaming, first up we have the original Skyrim 720p, low settings. Keep in mind, I mean, this is a low-end chipset here, so it's not going to run this at 60 FPS. But I got an average of 34 FPS, and as you can see, that GPU is clocking up to 600 megahertz here. Next up, Overwatch, 720p, low settings, 50% resolution scale. By the end of this, I was getting an average of 31 FPS. Not bad for a super mini PC, but I wouldn't pick one of these up specifically to play PC games on. And finally, for PC gaming, we have CSGO, 720p, very low settings. By the end of this, I was getting 28 FPS, and I was really hoping we could get over that 30 hump, but unfortunately, it's just not cutting it. A couple last things I like to test with these mini PCs is average CPU temps and power consumption. As for the CPU temps, it idles around 48 degrees Celsius. 4K video playback, it jumps up to 54. Gaming, on average, 70 degrees Celsius. And throwing an extreme test at it, which consists of running 3 Mark Time Spy and Cinebench at the same time, it did hit 89 degrees Celsius. But you'll be hard-pressed to hit these kind of temps. That's more of an extreme test. Total power consumption from the wall looks really good. At idle, 4.4 watts. 4K video playback, 8.3. Gaming, on average, 18.3 and the maximum I could get this to pull from the wall was 25.6 watts. So in the end, I think the final form of the GMK Nook Box performs really well for a mini PC. It's definitely on par with the Lark Box Pro, but it does come in a bit more expensive given that we have 8 gigs of RAM. Now I wouldn't run out and replace my Lark Box or Lark Box Pro with something like this because basically we're getting kind of the same unit here with 2 more gigs of RAM. But if you're in the market for a mini PC and you have to have that 8 gigs of RAM, I think this is definitely one to look at. If we head over to Amazon, you can see that the Larkbox Pro is going for $179.99, so $180, and the Nook Box is going for $219, but if you have Prime, there's a $20 off coupon making this $200, so it's only $20 more than the Larkbox Pro, and we're getting those extra 2 gigs of RAM. So in the end, it's really up to you. Is that extra RAM worth another 20 bucks? Because they do perform pretty much exactly the same. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I'm glad to see that GMK did fix all those issues we were having with the development unit or the early units that were shipped out. That heat was just way too much, and it really came down to the heat sink really not making contact with the CPU. So that's definitely fixed with the retail version. And performance here for J4125 Mini PC, 
is actually really good. If you have any questions, or if you want to see anything else running on this tiny PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.